Hey everyone, happy Monday. Happy Monday. We Another are week. the Hatch Homes Group and this is our Monday market update. Um, and today we are going to talk about pricing strategies in this market. So mm -hmm. let me share my screen real quick. There's been an article that came out on uh, Realtor Magazine that was talking about the uh, top seven cities with the highest share of price cuts. So yeah, we are seeing them in this market. Uh, as you can see, Portland has 20% of all their listings um, had 20% of them had a price cut last week, or I'm sorry, last month in July. And um, that's quite a number that we need to really start considering when it comes to pricing your home. Yeah. A lot of people like can panic and think, oh my gosh, price cuts is a, is a indicator that we're having a market shift. But what we've seen is that we think it's more of a pricing strategy shift rather than a market shift. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's more about this like psyche of, of looking at pricing instead of the whole market shifting. It's really just a price thing. Yeah. yeah. So let's put that in perspective a bit and look at the Portland market. First of all, though, that uh, five, uh, seven cities, um, that's the, the cities with the, these price drops only represents 15% of the cities, the major cities in USA. So it's not like a gigantic as what the media may want to make it out to be. Exactly. So let's look at Portland. Last, we looked, tracked the numbers week by week, and for the greater Portland area, last week, we actually saw a price increase on the average um, of uh, $2,000. Um, now, that's slight, but it is an increase, not a decrease for single family residences. Condominiums saw a slight decrease of 1,000, but there's a lot involved in that average. Um, mm -hmm. We look at the most active price ranges, 500 to 600,000 is the most active, 400 to 450 is the next most active, and then the 375 to 400,000 is the third most active. But big surprising thing is that um, properties, single family residents over 2 million, 43 of those went uh, pending last week. Mm. So, um, that that can affect and slew the numbers and you're looking at averages. So um, mm -hmm. um, we really need to look at things uh, closely by price range and area and so on. Yeah, which the TMO, I'm sorry, the total market overview does that we, um, that we'll go through in a minute. Um, but now, you know, talking about what are our top tips on how we price homes and having the conversation with our sellers. Uh, about these top four tips. Uh, the first one was, you know, pay attention to the feedback that you get, analyze and filter it. Angela, you have a lot of experience with this lately and so have I, but uh, you were gonna talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes you'll get put a listing live and you'll get feedback from like an agent that's like, oh, it's way overpriced. Like, you know, it, it's really overpriced. And I'm like, okay, like I take that feedback, but then I also listen to the other feedback and I realize that, wow, we're getting multiple offers. So, yeah. so you have to really like, listen to it. If every single agent was walking through the door saying this is overpriced, then obviously I'm going to take that very seriously. Um, but we're still gonna, we're still gonna look for more feedback. <laughs> we're still gonna like look for what went on the market that week. Right. So like maybe, and maybe like th there was like a rush of inventory that same week that could affect it. And maybe it means that we're going to, we're, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer, but so we're going to analyze, we're going to filter it. And we are going to make our decisions based off our, um, you know, what, what we're looking like, what we're looking right. at as a whole. Exactly. Don't make rash decisions based on just one feedback, like really analyze it all is the point. And obviously this, the second tip is don't panic if there's not multiple offers. Cause as we can see, like sometimes some houses stay on the market a little bit longer 
And like these days, a little bit longer is a week or two weeks, sorry, like two weeks instead of like one week. So don't panic if there's not multiple offers out the gate. Doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong. It's just a, the way the market is. Yeah. So I was saying I was watching this listing and it like it had a 50 $50,000 price reduction in the first week on the market. And that is a lot. Like yeah. I, I was watching this listing. I didn't think it was overpriced. And so, I mean, obviously every seller has a, their, a different reason. Maybe they just literally could not afford to wait a day longer before they got an offer. But, um, I really like, like, don't think you need to panic. I'm in a offer situation right now where a home was sitting on the market for almost two weeks with no offers. And then as soon as my buyers wanted to write, of course, there's another offer. Like, oh, it happens all the time, all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> so yeah. don't panic. Um, and also like sometimes multiple offers don't happen and that that's okay too. You know, you could still get you a really good offer. And three, um, price based on a range of comparable sales. So, you know, I'll say like back in like, I guess, normal markets, even competitive markets, we do see that like end of summer, um, we have a lot of sellers that are really trying to, you know, go back to that, like, or like pricing their homes based on the highest comparable sales of the, the like pre the rest of the part, the earlier part of the year. And they find that like, they've kind of hit the buyer ceiling, right? Like, like in price. And so when we look at price pricing and comparable sales, we want to look at a range. Like we don't, we're te- normally we don't want to price in the lowest comparable sale price. Normally we don't want to price based on the highest comparable sale price. We want to like figure out what that middle part is to give buyers enough wiggle room to feel like they can compete and they can go over. And also it's just, you know, important to know your market. Like sometimes like right now you, you actually can price your house based on the highest comparable sales and still get Good. multiple offers, but it depends on a few things that we look at. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that's also an indicator that the market is not like necessarily cooling prices are still going up and we will still be seeing them go up, um, for the next year. Mm-hmm. And for <laughs> be That's happy where you price it, you know, like we've heard so many stories recently where, um, other agents in the office, things like that, where they got their, their sellers, a full price offer, great offer. And the sellers are like, not happy with it. And so we want our clients to be happy, obviously. Yeah. So the first step is be happy if you just, if you just get, you know, full price, price. Yeah. You know? like yeah. you have to be ha- comfortable with the price that you're putting your, your listing your home at. Yeah. And we will talk about that in depth with you. And like, if you were to get the full price, then, you know, where you're happy with that. And then knowing that if you don't get multiple offers, at least you're having this full price and you're still going to be happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. So Michelle mentioned the TMO, the total market overview. These are numbers we look at every single week. um, And these are important numbers that we bring to every listing appointment. So John, there's just a few things you wanted to point out on this. Yeah, I talked about uh, the most active areas and the fact that um, single family residents had uh, gone up. Well, you can't really see the bottom line on those charts very clearly, but um, the average price last week for uh, single family residents was $612,540. Amazing. But a lot of that is um, uh, influenced by quite a large number of sales in the over 2 million and, um, uh, well, over 1 million is very active. But um, slight decrease in the... um, the list to sales ratio, but very slight. Mm-hmm. Um, days on the market went inched up a little bit um, and the average days on the market, yeah. Mm-hmm. The average days on the market, a ton, like 142, 142 days versus the last one, which was 57 days. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a sign of vacations right there. Right. That's vacation time right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that you guys found this video really helpful and um, 
you understand that, you know, just because there's some people saying that the market's shifting, it's it's mostly a pricing shift. So let us know if you have any questions, reach out anytime and we can schedule a free consultation for your particular home and what you need. Absolutely. Have a good week. Okay. Thanks. Cool,